deal with the time, right? So my name is Marshall Now, I'm a fire inspector with the city of Santa Fe. Uh, Ten years ago, ironically, you probably say CERT uh, got me here from San Jose, but it's more lack thereof CERT in Sonoma County because they didn't have a CERT program and decided to do firefighter instead. Um, so I encourage all of you that don't want to take CERT on to the fire academy and see. I can guarantee one thing though, there's definitely no uh, um, skits in the fire academy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're missing out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need some humor. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'm a fire inspector for the city of Santa Fe, and now I get the honor of coming over here and doing some um, general inspections and, and assistance in vegetation management in Marinwood, CSA 13, up in Woods Valley. Um, real quick, can I get a show of hands if anyone doesn't know what the word buoy is? What? Buoy. W-U-I. Oh. Uh, like so, <laughs> Wildland urban interface is really what we're focusing on. That's the area that I really focus within. Um, all of uh, Marin Wood actually is not wildland urban interface. There's a pocket of about, actually probably about 100 to 120 homes out of the 1,700 or 1,770 homes there are. Um, that, sorry, that are not within the wildland urban interface. Um, so the wildland urban interface is just where homes have been built in a dense population within or abutting um, open space area, which is the exact description of this entire area, all the way up Lucas Valley and across Lucas Valley and Mont Marin. Um, so we're very familiar in Marin County with wildland urban interface, and so much so that 10 years ago, or give or take, the county drew up boundary lines defining where the wildland urban interface is. And that's where we get that little pocket within Marin with CSE where there is no actual wildland inter urban interface. But as Chief Gray mentioned, uh, fires, emergency disasters, they don't know any sort of boundary. So um, the wildland urban interface, it does really, it's just a line on the map that we focus on. Um, it allows us to uh, provide strategic efforts to both uh, determine risk management and uh, fuel modification for homes. Um, we base everything here based off the counties. Um, determined wildland or urban interface. And with that, what we're going for at each individual residence is defensible space. Um, and I can't recall who, I think everyone in my, everyone here has already said something from my general speech. The defensible space is basically that 100 feet that we talked about, um, or that boundary around your home, which in uh, Marinwood is your entire property, uh, where you either managed, modified, removed, or trimmed the fuel around your property. And that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be vegetation. Um, obviously, we're looking for dead and dying vegetation, but it could also be pertaining to other items around your property that have either accumulated or certain wear out that are considered highly combustible. Um, so, as alluded to by Chief Gray and a few others, um, we do hazard assessments where we come out to each home and we'll actually walk your site and give you a general prescription on well, what needs to be done around the property. The easiest way to find that, other than calling into the fire department, is uh, you can actually just search online the San Rafael Vegetation Management, where the second tab that pops up, you click on the first link, it actually goes to a site that doesn't exist. So um, that, that's you know, the easiest way, but if you go to the city site and go through all the department pages, you'll find us. There's a little blue box, you fill it out, and it'll go right to my email. Um, I'll have your name and number and contact information. We'll schedule time to come out. It's actually extremely simple. If I get a phone call from you, pick up my card, you can do it that way, you can email me. Uh, we're, we're pretty open, our, our goal is to um, get out and do these inspections. Uh, so the hazard assessment is really focused on us coming out. So those property owners that are in, um, intent on actually modifying the fuel and vegetation around their home. Um, obviously we'll point out areas where you can do the, the first stages of your work, but um, it's, 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 we're there to help you gain compliance um, based on the ordinances and codes that exist. Um, after that, there's our general, you know, kind of knock and talk type inspections where we focus on strategic locations around Marinwood, where we would actually go and knock on your door and introduce ourselves, very similar to the skit there, and we would uh, request to kind of walk around your property and take a look. If you're not home, we have a nice form that we've created, which I have a couple copies in back that we'd be generally basing our um, inspection off of. Now currently, San Rafael has probably one of the most um, restrictive ordinances in all of Marin County. I highly expect that to change with the way some of the other agencies are uh, talking. But what we'll base all of our most of our inspections here off is what the state standard is. 
which is not much different. That's actually what we've modeled our form off of. It's the LE100 form that all the CAL FIRE inspectors uh, use when they go out to home. So we're, we're right on the same page with all of that. The only difference really is how we enforce things like juniper and, and bamboo. Um, but uh, otherwise, moving forward with that, um, Space. Uh, so uh, there's already been a general push uh, for Firewise here, uh, talking about it. I know CSA 13 has already done some substantial uh, efforts to not only become Firewise, but uh, move forward with that progress. But myself, uh, my colleague Patrick Pignardi, we're well versed. We um, attend all the Fire Safe Marine meetings. We uh, are in close contact with Top Lando and the County Marin, and we um, are your liaison for FireWise. So we are currently trying to get in contact with um, all of the different representatives, represent, uh, representatives of Marinwood in order to begin this FireWise process. It's a generally free process that you're part already fully capable of doing, and um, it's, it's very easy to do. It's all about getting national recognition and uh, banding together to reduce your risk. Um, so that, that's a, it's a it's very easy program to get. There's a lot of benefits. They're all already listed, so I'm not going to go through all the list of the benefits that um, Firewise offers. Uh, the next thing I really want to focus in, I kind of alluded to it earlier, is the changes that are coming for the wild end of an interface. Um, the writing's on the wall. We all have the lessons learned from what happened last year, and uh, the, the changes coming. And some of the biggest changes that are right in front of our face right now that are happening are what PG is doing. That's part of the shutoff. Um, so if we haven't already said it enough, Nixle, Alert Marine, and the pg &E alerts. Um, you can go online and sign up for free. pg &E will alert you 48 hours prior to any sort of possible shutoff. That's a, the quickest way to find out if there's any sort of high weather red flag warning coming. Um, now with that, there's the potential that they can shut off the power to a, a large uh, portion of any sort of, uh, any portion of Marine County. That's what you show the map to. Um, but what they're doing, as far as their efforts, is they've expanded out their requirements around the power lines. Um, prior to any of these fires, they required somewhere from 12 to 18 inches of clearance. That is now expanded out to uh, 12 feet. So whether what that's going to look like as they actually start moving forward with that pro program, I don't know. But currently, they're really focusing on the open space and pushing those boundaries out by 12 feet around all power poles and power lines to help protect that infrastructure. Um, you know, it's really the responsibility of the property owner to really focus on what you have growing close to and near combustible power poles. Uh, because if your vegetation manages to threaten that infrastructure, you're, you're just adding to fuel that fire. Um, a couple other things along with the alerts is they are implementing a heavy weather station um, increase around all of California. And San Rafael's already requested three weather stations to be placed on strategic points around the community, um, which hopefully will uh, encompass some sort of camera network um, to add to what the county marine already has. So um, like I said, when the majority of my speech was kind of wrapped up in everyone else's. So hopefully you got a lot of information. I brought cards for myself and Patrick Pignardi. Again, those cards are your direct line to get a hold of us to schedule one of those, um, we call it a hazard assessment, a residential hazard assessment. If you're savvy online, you can do it online. You can just email or any phone number that you have will probably end up right back to my desk no matter what. So thank you so much for uh, offering us to, to be available to you. Any questions? We have a oh, right over here. Yes, I'm uh, Ron Marinoff, the fire commissioner for County Service Area 13. That's the 538 homes uh, west of Juvenile Hall. And we need your help and Supervisor Connolly's help to do something with the park and open space people. The current director will not cut the weeds. It was a policy started by his predecessor after 45 years of the county cutting the weeds every year. Upon doing some questioning of that, they said, well, the bird nesting continues until August 1. Well, that was 90 days ago. Okay, right now, everybody in this room is the endangered species if we get a 40 mile an hour wind and a fire. It's time to cut the weeds and take away the danger that everybody in Marinwood is facing from a fire with a 40 or 50 mile an hour wind 
flowing from west to east. Please do what you can to make that agency wake up. And that's completely, completely already noted. So we have, we have that on our list. Um, I'll definitely look into it. Um, obviously, if it's waiting until the next year ends, then why has it never ended? So I hear that loud and clear. Um, I, as far as parks and open space, county, I, that's just that's that, that avenue I have to go down. I've already reached out to the Parks Department for Marin Woods specifically to follow up on all the projects working on here. Um, Supervisor Connolly definitely expressed all the different efforts that are already being done. Um, so I will follow up to make sure if I have anything that's happening currently and, and what the plans are for, for next season. And that's kind of the mode that we're all in right now is just dialing it all in for next season. Excuse me, sir. You're talking about the meadow in front of the juvenile house. Correct. That's correct. Well, why can't they cut it next week? I, I don't have that answer. Yeah. So how do I follow yeah. up yeah. with that? We're going to definitely follow up.